Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic again. Now today we got a video on a 2013 Dodge Avenger. It's got the 2.4 liter world class engine and we've got a water pump leak. I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do to access it. I'll give you some torque specs. i even give you the little diagram on how the belt's routed. I'm going to help you out with this. So you just sit here and you watch it, check it out, see if it's something you feel like tackling. If it is, I've got your back. I'll show you what to do. If you don't, hey, now you know what you're paying for when you take it to a shop. So you stay tuned, check it out, and we'll talk again at the end of this. Now, to gain access to the water pump, what we're going to do, we're going to lift the vehicle up. We're going to get to it from the passenger side uh, wheel opening. We're actually going to take a splash shield off. So everything's going to be done pretty much from down below. Just make sure if you got a lift, no problem. If you got to jack it up on the ground, put you some jack sins under the vehicle and just take your time. It may help you if you're doing it on the ground to take the tire off. I'm using a lift, so I don't need the tire uh, being taken off. It can stay right where it is. That's one less thing I've got to take loose so I can get access to it fairly easy with the lift. So just do whatever's safe for you and whatever you've got the equipment to do. Otherwise, it's not a very difficult job. Just follow the steps I'm going to show you, and I'll give you some more items at the end of this video to help you as well. So, in the meantime, I want to get this thing up there. Alright, so what we need to do is get this antifreeze drain. Now, the drain that we've got to get to on the radiator, the, this is the far passenger side corner of the radiator. And if you look up here where I'm kind of pointing, uh, try to get up in there, it's kind of a dark place. But right up in here, that's actually where the drain is. It comes up the side of the radiator instead of towards the back of the vehicle. Now what I like to use is I've got a quarter inch ratchet right here. I've actually got the head cut. It's kind of notched so that way I can get up on there and I can work it off. So that's what I'm going to be using to get that drain loose. Just make sure you got your catch pan up underneath so that you'll catch anything that comes out. That's where the drain's going to be located for you to get all the antifreeze out of this vehicle. Now what we need to keep in mind on that radiator drain is we have to back it out. It is basically like a corkscrew. Uh, it's threaded in. That's why I'm using my socket and my tool like I am. Uh, you just got to go counterclockwise with it to back it out. And as you back it out, she'll start coming outward just like a corkscrew. You'll just keep backing up. Just let it come out. I'll be pushing inward while it's doing it. Just back up. So finally opens up and it'll start draining. And there we go, we've got our antifreeze coming out and we got our catch pan underneath. So once we get that drained, we'll work on getting the splash here out of the way so I can show you where the water pump is leaking and what we got to do to get it off. All right, so just like I promised, we're going to work on getting the splash shield out. Now we've got three plastic fasteners we got to take loose first. We got one here where the splash shield meets the uh, fender wheel liner and then we got the two on the fender wheel liner. The main reason why I want to get these out is there's actually a 10 millimeter bolt further back up in here that the splash shield mounts to the subframe with and we've got another one over here so what we do is we'll work on getting these out now these are your basic style uh, push pins they basically have a insert in the center uh, as the pin goes in it expands what you got to do is you've got to pull the center piece out now, I'm just using a regular panel removal tool here uh, it works fine and what it is is as you can see as you squeeze it, I've got the top piece raised, as you squeeze it, it expands the bottom piece. It acts like a plastic rivet that's reusable basically. So now I've got that one out. I need to go ahead and get these other two out. And so this tool you can pick up at any local parts store. They make them plastic, they make them metal. Um, if it's dash work, I want the plastic one. If it's outside, such as where we're at now, I like the metal ones. And they come in different shapes and sizes. So these work pretty good. There we go. Now we've got that loose so we can get up in here to get to that 10 millimeter we're speaking of. And then we've got the other one. This is that back 10 millimeter I told you we got to take loose off that splash shield. We've got it loose from the fender well liner, but now we got to get the actual bolts to hold it to the subframe. We got this 10 we need to take out. Once you get that 10 out, I'll show you what the other one is. All right, so here's the front 10 as we pull back on that splash shield. You can actually see it up in there. 
That's the tin right there. You're probably going to need to use a, a ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench. Or if you can get in there with a quarter inch, that's fine. Once we get that off, and the other one we've already got off, that splash shield's going to come right out. All right, we got the splash shield out of the way. Now we got access to everything on the front of the engine, which would be the passenger side, right side of the vehicle, because it is transversely mounted. Here's a serpentine belt. And there is your water pump. If you look over here, this little discoloration here is actually the water pump leaking. It's actually causing drips. Uh, this one is belt driven. It's bolted to the back side of the block. It comes as an assembly. Uh, the pulley is going to be coming with it on this one because this is a Mopar replacement we're going with. Um, so what I do recommend doing before you take the belt off, you need to give you a little diagram, draw where the belt goes, give you some, uh, put some circles on there for pulleys, show your diagram so that way when you go back with it, you'll know exactly which way the belt goes. But just in case you forgot to do that, I'm going to actually give you that illustration uh, before this is all said and done. So we'll move on now to getting that belt off.